lining up. She'll push out into the teeth of the breeze. A couple of cracking days of racing for Stephanie Veneer so far. On Friday, she was eighth, and yesterday she got her first podium for a long time, finishing just off the winning pace of Sofia Gorgia, a tenth of a second behind yesterday's champion. So Stephanie Veneer on her way, nice and low and aerodynamic at the top before she has to stand tall and make some high-speed turns. So it looks really like this, the wind is just uh, on the first three or four gates, I would say. You could just see the snow sort of moving around slightly over the surface. As long as it doesn't get any worse than that, then we should be okay for the race. But uh, it's not easy when the wind is blowing or gusting is even worse. Um, but yeah, no problems down here now that she's into the trees. Stephanie nice. Benier, one World Cup win to her name that was in Garmisch and a downhill back in 2019 but I think there might be a win forthcoming this season for Vanier she's a little late on that red had to adjust lean in to make the turn and look at the sweeping inviting turns that lie ahead of her here Oh, it's beautiful in this section, but she was well off the ideal line. And number one, not always most advantageous. Uh, and the other ladies in the start gate will be watching and learning. Stephanie Veneer sets the pace. 1 minute 15.75 seconds. Yes, as Emma mentioned, never easy going number one in a slalom, in a GS, and in a Super G, in a downhill. Of course, you've had a training run. You've found your way down the course, but you're very much a pathfinder. And the others will watch and learn from the first run down the mountain this morning from Stephanie Veneer. She set the pace 1 minute 15.75 seconds. So the line so important on all the rollers, making sure that you know exactly where your direction, what you're aiming for. Uh, that's just so important. There's quite a few rollers, quite a uh, not huge flight taken over the jumps today compared to the downhill, but still very difficult. Laura Gaucher had a pretty good result yesterday, finishing in ninth in the Talconse downhill on Saturday. Away she goes. It's very much just like a downhill to start here. They've taken a couple of the jumps out of the race at the top, much to the uh, disquiet of uh, Sophia Goggi, although she said in her interview, you know, all I can hope is that it's fair for everybody. They had no choice. The wind was buffeting the control gates, flattening some of them. They had to lower the start and therefore take a bit of the sting out of this Super G. Let's see how Laura Gaucher who comes from team compares to Stephanie Veneer. And she's fastest, uh, faster than the Austrian by 0.32 at the second split. Well, Laura Gaucher very lucky on the top. There was almost no wind at all when she had that start, went out that start gate. And that's why I do believe we saw her 0.3 up on the top split. Because to be honest, there's nothing in those first 15 seconds. And Veneer definitely had a little bit more wind. And here, Laura Gaucher not struggling at all with the line and are building now almost half a second up. Pretty solid so far for the first of the French athletes on the course. And she hits the final jump gets about a five metre flight and skis for the lead by four tenths of a second. Laura Gaucher of France out in front on the final day of racing in Zalkense. Stephanie Veneer drops to second. Next to ski will be the first of the Swiss, the world downhill champion Yasmin Fleury. That was an excellent run from Gaucher, really nailing the line and looking for that aerodynamic position whenever possible. Lovely big sweeping turn over the, on the right foot and then it just drops over and she'll look for that tuck again. But it was right down here, I think on the next turn actually, where she nailed the line compared to Veneer. So Gaucher will make her way, but she's already there to the leader's chair as we watch Yasmin Fleury. She's had uh, one Super G World Cup victory in Sam Ritz and Home Snow back in 2017. Likes this discipline, will enjoy the start. We know she's got new skis, fast skis, and she should thrive where the wind has just gone for the moment. It's benefited Yasmin Fleury like it did Laura Gaucher. She's faster than the previous two by 0.16. Now, Yasmin Fleury, 10th in... Friday's instalment of the Super G here. Eighth in Val there. She's actually had uh, three good results this season, including that win in the Val downhill. And she leads Laura Gaucher, then went a little wide. Yeah, that might be, that will be interesting on the next split. I think she's lost probably a tenth or so there. But you can, oh no, oh. 
Oh no. Oh. Oh. Yeah, she caught an edge. Just caught an edge on that right ski. Ah, we don't need any more crashes. Never seems now. Okay, she's moving. Yeah, she just kind of lost a little bit of purchase or grip on the right ski and then almost went towards the splits and then caught the left ski very suddenly. Yeah, far too many crashes, Matt, haven't they? Really, it's a, it's a heavy schedule, especially for the men in Bingen with the length of courses. Yeah, it's really, it's so necessary when you think, especially a course like Bingen, which is, well, the downhill, two and a half minutes long. Um, it's just so taxing physically, but also, also mentally to be able to, you know, stay in that focus for two and a half minutes and go again the next day. Um, it's really, really tough. So, yeah, I think it, they've, they've been really wise to listen and make those changes. So, nervous scenes now, Puravano at the top. Getting ready to go, always difficult after an interruption. Still an interruption, takes a little bit longer. They've got to make sure that that netting is all back in place.
Carabano. Great skiing so far, just 4.42 back. But good, solid, strong skiing, strong on that right ski. Maybe could search for the, the tuck just a little bit more. Comes through that tricky section. Oh, she's late. She's all over the place through there. That's costly. Gets a little bit back over that roller. 0.55 back. Oh, and she's still struggling to get back online. Keeps pushing towards the finish. Got the finish in her sight. Small jump there. And Piravano over the line. 0.57 back in third position. So Laurie Goshi still in the lead. Early days though. Just four down. Lovely slow motion of Piravano as she comes. Clipping past that gate. Look at that determination in the face. Those hands right in front of the face. Trying to stay in that aerodynamic position. Super G. Remember. All about the skills of the giant slalom skier. But also the speed of the downhiller. And we go back to the start with Weile of Germany. Five Super G World Cup wins. And she pushes out that start gate. And you can see the gate just... Moving around in the breeze. Oh, she's got a lot of wind on the top. We might see her a little bit behind, just behind on the top. Just 300 trailing. Not so lucky with that wind. Well, out of the wind now. Good in that tuck. A little bit upright as she comes over that roller. A little bit of snow coming off the outside ski. Well, maybe not quite as clean as she could be on those top turns. And yes, comes down into the plunges down on that right ski. Nice and clean. No problems there. Gets back into the tuck. Not quite got the speed though, I would say. Oh, and she too struggling on that gate. So that's the key section of this Super G. And then it's so inviting. Oh, that's another heavy edge check there. Struggling with the line. So a disappointment there. She was all over the place on that bottom section. Top was good, but just struggling with the line on the, uh, most of the bottom third. A little bit on the inside there as well. Widely definitely the downhill, the stronger discipline for her. And next up, Bassino. Now we know she's got the skills of the giant slalom skier, the soft touch of the downhiller fifth in Super G just a few days ago and she powers out of that start gate. Now has she got as much wind? Let's see. Yes yeah, she does. That's awkward. Really difficult as the snow moves across from left to right but she's got the green light. Oh that was a little stumble. How Bersino got that soft touch just struggling a little bit in giant slalom, not quite finding his form that she has uh, in recent years. Just struggling a little bit with the confidence. Trailing now by 0.52 and struggling to hold that line and the clean edge through that section of the course. Smooth and clean on the right ski, but not got the speed you can see. Often it's just the confidence that's lacking. No problems through there. Look at those turns. That's a lovely visual that you get. There's about six turns, beautiful rhythmical turns, just looking to be clean. It looks almost like she's trying to do too much, actually, trying to make speed. Speed uh, coming towards the finish now, and she's going to be behind. 1.08 into fourth position. Yeah, sorry, Matt. I've been filling in for you, everybody. Sorry about Matt. Yeah, good to hear you back. 
Oh yes, there, that's a lovely shot as she comes in over that roller and comes to the jump, puts those hands towards the feet. Straight back into the tuck. And Laura Gaucher still in the lead. Yeah, sorry, Emma, I, my commentary system has been uh, problematic, but I'm back with you now in time for Federica Brignoni's run in Zalkense, second in the current Super G standings. Away goes Brignoni. She will be hungry for success, having come pretty close on Friday and then missed out completely yesterday after a disappointing downhill day. Wearing number seven, the Italian Federica Brignoni goes into the darkness and and the lack of light at this part of the course but she will i think relish the shortened course 1600s up here great start for brignoni oh don't you just love brignoni looks so relaxed doesn't she that's the best line we've seen through that section nothing wrong with this so far oh she's oh i think she came through that section with a little bit more speed than she expected got bounced around a little bit it's going to be interesting it's going to be close on the next split Fourth on Friday, oh, Brignoni just jams the tails of the ski sideways. An extra little half turn from her, how has it affected her time? 200 slower through sector number three, but overall, 1500s faster. It needs to be accurate from here on in. Brignoni has had a, a risky run as usual, flies the final jump. This will be close, Brignoni second in the end. 0.25 behind, that equates to 6.2 metres. Laura Gaucher, who was second on the course, still leads the way for France. Oh, Matt, you could so clearly see it was that turn right at the bottom. And she got pushed a little bit wide and she had to stand very hard on the left ski and almost go back uphill. That was one of the mistakes further up. She came in with more speed than she expected. Been a frustrating week all round for Federica Brignoli. Now let's see how Kaiser Vikov Lee goes on this final day of racing. Mixed fortunes for her this week. She's got some wind to deal with at the top. She made the podium on Friday, crashed in Saturday's downhill, off and away in the final race of the weekend. She said she was feeling sore and stiff after her encounter with the safety netting. But no damage was done, the ligaments were fine, and she's back in business on this Super G Sunday. And this is such a te test for her mental strength. Oh, and a little wobble there. So difficult to get back into that start gate after such a heavy hit. Oh, and she was late in the line, just like Brignone before her, coming in with maybe a little bit more speed than she'd expected. When you inspect the course in the morning, you get 45 minutes to have a look at the line but sometimes you come into certain sections with more speed than you think and that's when it becomes problematic half a second off the pace of laura gaucher the top five separated by more than a second this is a decent looking finish from kaiser vikoff lee second in val d'azere second on friday here in salkenze and third provisionally today 0.29 laura gaucher hangs on Laura Gaucher has never won a World Cup race. Maybe things will go for her today. There's still a lot of talent to come, of course. But at the moment, the French athlete from team is holding on to top spot on the leaderboard. Well, Kaiser Lee oh, living dangerously again on that gate there. Brignoni, exactly the same mistake. And that TV screen at the top will be uh, pretty important right now as the athletes are still to ski can just pick up on that uh, that gate which is tricky if you come in there with a lot of speed you've got to try to come in with a little bit more direction Lara Gubarami wrapping up against the wind at the top of the course Michelle Gizin her teammate is next to go pushes hard still pushing by the time she stood on that left ski to make the first turn you can see the wind at its worst at the top after about gate number six or seven it starts to ease off. Powerful looking start from Michelle Gizin from Switzerland, born in San Moritz, raised in Engelberg, and a double Olympic champion. Twice she's been the Olympic combined champion. No combines 
on the uh, World Cup circuit this season. So Gizin is focusing on her speed uh, events this season, although she's had some success in slalom as well. Oh, no problems through there for Gizin, but she does come in with just a little bit less speed. And uh, I felt like on the flat, she maybe had her elbows a little wider than she could have. She needed to tuck them in. Oh, there she's getting late and struggling. It's a little bit bumpy on the left foot. It was exactly the same spot that some of the athletes had problems in the downhill as well. It's bumpy. It falls away on the left and it's a big turn. No problems down here though, Brignone. That's the gate that she struggled on. Gaucher leads for France. Brignone second for Italy. Michel Gizin leads the way by five hundredths of a second. What a finish from Gizin. Out in front, steals the lead from Gaucher and Michel Gizin is top here in Zalkenze. Wow, she really nailed that bottom section, didn't she? She got a little bit low and late on the left footer. But after that, this is the left footer here, falls away quite heavily towards the left. But these next eight gates, she skied beautifully. She was so clean. Celebrations for the Swiss team. Michelle Gizin out in front in Zalkense. Ragenhild Mo Finkel will be next to go. Had a World Cup Super G win last season in Cortina d'Ampezzo. They'll be back there in a few weeks' time. Into the breeze, nice and low, cutting a good shape. She'll have rehearsed this uh, aerodynamic shape in the wind tunnel from time to time. Six hundredths up over Gizin at that first intermediate. Gizin leads for Switzerland. Gauche second for France. The Italian Federica Brignoni is third. Mo Winkel, a little bit disappointed with her 25th yesterday. But Super G is more her discipline. And goodness me, this is an absolute cracking run. She is having so dynamic and so strong. Getting the aggression through the outside ski, but not too hard on it. Creating the angles, but not the force. And that is the key in this discipline. Now remember, Michelle Gizin was particularly fast on the lower quarter as Movinkel stands tall to avoid skiing out of the course. Still holds a decent lead here over Michel Gizin of just over a quarter of a second. Movinkel has had a flyer here. Tucks in for the last couple of turns and the final artificially raised jump. She will go top <laughs> by one hundredth of a second. Oh my word, it couldn't be any tighter. Movinkel out in front by the <laughs> narrowest possible margin. Oh, she can't believe it. That's so great to see because she's she's had an up and down season that uh, disqualification in the first giant slalom in Solden. Um, and then yesterday, a little bit of a disappointment in the downhill. But wow, she really nailed this one today. Such tight margin. So that was tight, living dangerously, but carried so much speed and had to do a quick edge change to make sure she stayed on line. Michelle Giz is smiling through the pain there after she had her lead stolen by just one hundredth of a second. Joanna Halen will be next on this course for Switzerland. Pushing and skating out of the start. Runner up in the Val d'Isere downhill, sixth and ninth in Val d'Isere and Alton marked in Super G respectively so far this season. An early green light for Joanna Halen, who is carving a great line at the top. That's a fabulous view that we're getting, that bird's eye view or dro drone view. Carrying a lot of speed into this section. But to keep it very clean, because Movinkel was incredibly clean, just trailing by point one right now. Heavy edge check. Oh, living so dangerously on that section. Came in with a bit more speed than she expected and had to really jam those edges on. Halen comes onto the lower third of this track nice clean turn there we saw Movinkel make a mistake on that section Halen was a little more accurate but the damage is done at the top and I can't see that she can claw back seven tenths of a second with the terrain that remains so I think Movinkel's lead is safe in fact the top three separated by only six hundredths are all secure as Joanna Halen goes eight exactly a second off the pace so the top three separated by only six hundredths of a second. Movinkel of Norway, Gizin of Switzerland and Gaucher of France. 
Yeah, just a little bit too hard, a little bit too much aggression and force going through that outside ski at times. And it did well to stay in on that section. That gate's caught a few of them out. Next to ski will be the Olympic downhill champion, Corinne Suter. Corinne Suter will be fired up for some success today. She didn't finish yesterday's downhill, which was the, the main event for her this weekend. The Olympic downhill champion, one of the stars of Swiss sport. She and Beat Voigts, of course, did the Olympic downhill double in Beijing in 2022. Point two two is her advantage. What a start for Corinne Suter. The start, the top of this course will certainly suit her skill set. Let's see if she can master the technical demands of the middle part of the track. Well, she's certainly got the gliding skills and she got that little bit of luck at the top with the no wind at all, but managed to keep it going. Still just lost 700 from the top split, but this is good skiing and she's got to keep it clean. Didn't have any problems through that section where so many of them have come a little bit too tight, a little bit too direct. It's going to be super close on the next split. There's that left footer. She has to just do a little bit of a stivet there. She wanted to make sure she kept that line. Now, this is going to be interesting. Just Corinne's, the wrong side now. Corinne Suter's last World Cup Super G win was at the start of last season in Lake Louise. She is only 19 hundredths off the pace. Look at the wide starts. Incredible athleticism from Corinne Suter. She won't be far away. Fifth in the end. 0.34. The top five are tightly bunched today. The top three still within six hundredths of each other. Corin Suter gave it everything. Not quite enough. And Mo Winkel still leads in Zalkenze. Yeah, I think, to be honest, when she looks back at the video replay, she's going to kick herself for that little stivet. That's that little twisting action of the um, skis just to make sure she got the line on that left foot. I think she could have been a little, taken a bit more risk through it. Uh, you do risk getting a little bit late on the next skates but I think it would have been faster. The World Cup Super G standings leader, Connie Hooter from Austria, looking for the Austrian Super G double. She was triumphant on Friday, winning the first of the two Zalkenze Super Gs. Didn't feature in yesterday's downhill. Didn't sleep, she said, after Friday's success. Hopefully she got a bit more sleep last night. And she's back and racing on this Sunday looks like a, a pretty fiery start from Connie Hooter with lots of family members having made the journey to watch her race on this Sunday, having enjoyed her success on TV on Friday. 34.14 is Movinkel's split and Hooter is way quicker, half, quarter of a second faster than the Norwegian. Oh, she's up, twisting the upper body dangerously on just two of those turns. You could see her coming over the right-footed drop away. She twisted up, uh, did, luck, uh, did well to stay in position. And then again on the next turn, just very slightly, just occasionally. But it's excellent skiing and she's got the confidence. Now, these turns should suit her. Oh, it's close. The most successful Super G skier of the season so far. Second in San Moritz, fourth in Val d'Isere. And then the champion here on Friday, looking to depose Ragnhild Movinkel. And Hooter has done it again. Nine hundredths of a second. She leads in Zalkense. Hooter is on for the Austrian Super G double. She's almost looking like she's a bit in disbelief, isn't she, Matt? It's, it's, you know, when you're on a roll and when things are going your way, then that's it. Look, there's that twisting I was talking about. Look at that upper body twisting. But somehow it didn't affect the skis. That is incredibly skillful because usually when you twist the upper body, the back of the ski just drifts out a little bit. But it didn't. Ah, oh, that was a view of the coaches watching on the screen at the top. Hooter will now make her way to the leader's chair, but she'll be keeping an eye on the big screen because Lara Gutbarami is next to go. And when it gets to day three of a speed racing weekend and Lara Gutbarami hasn't had a win, you know she will be saving her best until last. And she is off and away. Finished third on Friday. Finished sixth in Saturday's downhill. Has a green light early in the final race of the weekend. Good start for Lara. 
Wow, that was a very different line to everybody else on that top section. More direct. I was just going to say, is it going to pay off? And direct there as well. Uh, as you said, Matt, she is really looking to put one down today. Not so, ha not happy without a podium in the last couple of days. And you can see that body language is telling us that she is just looking to get speed out of every turn. Not a stivet there, carrying that speed out of these turns. Possibly just a little bit too heavy though on the outside key. No, I'm wrong. She's got that green light, 1400. It's incredible taking that dynamic position and taking the speed down the hill. Swiss love nothing more than beating Austrians on Austrian snow and vice versa. And Lara Gutmarani could silence the Austrian fans here. And she does so convincingly. A quarter of a second. Gutmarani goes top. Hooters lead doesn't last long at all. It's all change in Zalkense. Lara Gutmarami is in front. Connie Hooter second. And Ragnhild Mowinkel has now been pushed down to third. Oh, that position, incredible. So dynamic. I feared at times she might have been a little bit too heavy on that edge, but not at all. No, just so clean. So now she has to watch and wait. And she'll be paying particular attention to the next skier on the hill. We all will, because it is Sofia Gorgia. Six times the winner in this discipline, including once this season in San Moritz. She also won yesterday's downhill in style in Zalkense. She's looking for the downhill Super G double now. Gorgia was disappointed after the course was shortened and the top jumps were taken out of contention. And uh, I think that is reflected in the fact that she's two tenths behind at the first intermediate. But make no mistake, if anybody can claw back that sort of deficit, Sophia Gorgia can. And she's charging through the midsection now. She's not as clean as Lara Gutt, though. But um, now getting incredibly close to Gutt's time. And Gorgia, she loves it fast. She loves the jumps big. And that's why she wanted to go from that higher start but this super g is still tricky you still have to get the line right you still have to search for that aerodynamic position or oh, she's lost it on the left foot there oh risky, i think it might have gone risky the wrong side turn. yeah Gorgia gambling everything and it's oh. uh, gone against her good speed but 0.57 off the pace i don't think even the great Gorgia can claw back half a second with what's left available to her on the mountainside. 114.95 to beat. No, it's not happening. Godge is down in sixth. And Gut Barami holds on to leadership of this Zalkanze Super G. Well, what a race this is shaping up to be. Oh, isn't it just yeah and it was definitely this turn coming right now look she's on the inside she did well not to boot out the outside ski the left ski was she wasn't getting purchased at all and she will kick herself when she looks back at the video she knows where she threw it away i think it would have been incredibly close otherwise i think lara gubarami looking down the start list will be sort of quietly content with the way the race has unfolded so far as she moves in to uh, take over her position on the leader's chair, out in front by a quarter of a second to Connie Hooter, who won this race on Friday. Then Mo Winkel third, followed by Gizin and Gauthier, then Gorgia, just ahead of Federica Brignoni. Yasmin Fleury hit the safety netting hard, didn't finish, but was able to pick herself up, put her skis back on, and uh, gently make her way down to the foot of the course. A reminder of the top three, Ragnhild Mo Winkel of Norway. 0.34 off the pace, down in third. Connie Hooter unable to secure the Austrian Super G double. The winner on Friday pushed down into second position by an electrifying run from Lara Gutmarami, who's looking for her 40th World Cup win. We are 30 seconds away from resumption here in Zalkense. Welcome back to viewers on Eurosport TV. Number 16, Roman Miradoli is ready to go. 
second French athlete on the start list today. Laura Gaucher held the lead for a while. She started with number two, but Mira Dolly is slowly but surely coming back to full strength and fitness after a long injury layoff. And she missed the early part of this season after that uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury that she sustained in March of last year. It's a lively start though, nine hundredths up at the first split for Roman Miradoli. Well, with Lara Gut currently in ahead, 0.25, and then they're all so bunched closely afterwards. I'm struggling to see anyone come in and beat that time. But uh, Miradoli has a good line, similar line. To, I was just going to say similar line to Lara Gut on that top section. A little bit scrappy through this section, but carrying a lot of speed. Now plunging down, nice and strong and clean on that right foot, foot, carrying that speed into this section, comes up to the section where we saw Gorgia lose a lot of time. She's pretty clean there. This is still very good. 58.36 for Guparami. Uh, Miradoli trails by 0.32. The way things stand, that could put her into third position, which would give her a massive boost of confidence as she returns from that injury. Time for the podium, 1.15.29, not quite, it's seventh for Roman Miradoli. Laura Gaucher still the best of the French in fifth, but that could be a turning point in the comeback for Roman Miradoli on her way potentially to her first top ten since returning from her injury layoff. Happy with that result confidence is absolutely massive in ski racing so let's hope she can take that forward Francisca Gritch is next once she's been on a Super G World Cup podium can she bring this lead back to Austria remember Huta had it for a while only one run before Lara Gutmarani who was next on the hill robbed her of top spot on the leaderboard this looks like a promising start from Francisca Gritch only four hundredths of a second off the pace at the first guideline time. Rich with a good line through there and working the terrain on the top section beautifully. Oh, oh she's living dangerously there. Oh, I'm really late. Oh, what Goodness a shame. Me. Yeah, she's gosh, got she's a all huge over. green light, but she's all over the place here. All over the place, Matt. Yeah, goodness me, uh, that is such a shame. It's going to be interesting at that next split, though. I think it's gone definitely the wrong side of the red, but how deep into the red? That is the question. Rich is taking a completely unorthodox line, uh, not deliberately, of course. How's the time? Still, well, she's still in pretty good shape, actually, considering how much extra yardage she skied on her way down this track. But with the top 10 separated by only 0.69, her chance of securing a decent result today has long gone. And Francisca Gritch is 11th in the end, 0.73 off the pace. Oh, do you know what, Matt? Without that mistake, I think yeah. we might have seen that top spot change. I agree. Good stuff from Gritch. Guparami leads for Switzerland. Stealing the lead from Connie Hooter of Austria by a quarter of a second. Ragenhilt Movenkel is still clinging on to third spot with Michel Giz in fourth. And Laura Gaucher fifth. Ariana Redler of Austria is next to go. She's enjoyed some good results here this weekend seventh yesterday sixth on friday redler seems to have uh, the worst of the wind at the top now that was a shame it actually looked like the wind it looks like it's been coming across the slope but i felt there it turned and come up the slope hence we see 0.33 already on the tap that's i mean that's so disappointing because that is something you can't control and in ski racing and in life in general, we talk about controlling the controllables and the wind is one thing that she couldn't control, but that is great to see. She has crawled her way back and is now just into the red, just eight tens, eight hundreds back, I should say. A good line through this section, just getting bounced around a little bit on the right ski as the track starts to form. Austrian hopes are lifted by this invigorating top section from Ariana Redner the next split will tell us if she's still in touch four tenths they're so closely bunched at the top of the leaderboard I think even under half a second will keep her out of the top five places what a shame for Ariana Redner who's enjoyed a bumper weekend of success and has secured her place on the Austrian team but no luck today down in 16th position 1.61 seconds 
off the pace of Lara Gutbarami, who's still out in front for Switzerland. Oh, you could clearly see those last six turns. She really worked against gravity. The turn was all done underneath the gate, and she really misjudged the line there, and hence we saw her lose another nine-tenths, just over five, six gates. Alice Robinson of New Zealand, fourth in San Moritz in 2021, her best Super G result. She's moved up from racing only in giant slalom to tackling speed events now. New coaching set up around her, but an early mistake from Robinson as she drifts wide to skiers left. Big crash in training, downhill training a few days back. So hopefully able to put that one behind her. She's such an aggressive skier so aggressive on that outside ski taking an aggressive line as well and really searching for that low position even when she's out of the tuck she almost looks like she's in the tuck now if she can make sure she's not too hard on that outside ski this could be a really good strong run how does she do on that left ski put some sideways a little bit you can hear the ski juddering fraction She's got to make sure she got, doesn't get late coming into this section. Uh, a little bit more damage has been done, though. Gubarami leads with a time of 1 minute 14.95 seconds. She's the only skier under 1 minute 15. Connie Hooter is a quarter of a second behind. Alice Robinson had a really good top section. Less successful on the lower half and goes into 14th position. Some excellent skiing from Robinson. I always just feel though, she just needs to develop that little bit more of that soft touch. Miriam Puckner will be the next of the in-form Austrians to try and take the lead away from Lara Gutbarami. She was equal third alongside Nicole Delago in yesterday's downhill. Miriam Puckner starting late on the start list today or later than she would normally in a downhill with bib number 20. Can she bring the smiles back to the Austrian fans' faces? Well, the early signs are really promising here for the uh, Olympic Super G silver medalist. And she is bringing all that confidence from yesterday into this super giant. And goodness me, I mean, she's a tall, tall athlete, but she's got that lovely soft touch. That's a different line. We haven't seen that one so far. Now, that's going to be interesting because actually, I don't know if she let it run enough on that section. We may see her just lose a tenth or so on that next split. Now, here's the important left footer. Good through there. Putner's done everything right so far. Next split. Only three hundredths behind Lara Gutbarami. This could go either way. Gutbarami was mighty fast on the lower quarter. If Miriam Puckner can just hold it together here, then the Austrian fans will erupt to celebrate. Has she done enough? No, it's gone. It's third. Puckner's on the podium again. Podium yesterday, podium today, and she removes Raganil Movinkel from the top three. Oh, she really is on form at the moment. What a different line she took through that section, though. There, you, I think it's this gate here. And you could see she cut right in from left to right, really trying to get that height through the section where we've seen some of the skiers really struggling and getting very tight on the gate. Relief for Lara Gutbarami as she watched Miriam Puckner ski just uh, 0.26 behind. The Austrians once again have got two of the three available podium places today with Connie Hooter second. Now Miriam Puckner third, and next to ski is the first of the Slovenians, Ilka Stuhets, starting with bib number 21. Stuhets, 12th yesterday in downhill, started to find a little bit of form. That's good and clean through there. No problems with the line. A little bit taller though, maybe, than she could be. Hence we see her trailing by 0.51. Nothing wrong with the line, it's just the body position. That's maybe just the confidence that's lacking slightly to be able to hold the line back to get into the lower position. I heard her say in her pre-race interview yesterday that she loves this course, but it doesn't like her, which is uh, <laughs> never a good combination because she just can't get to grips. No matter how many times she races here, she's never had anything 
remotely resembling success and it looks like a, a similar story on this Sunday morning in Salkense. Lara Gutmarami's lead is absolutely rock solid at the moment. Ilka Stuhet's 20th, slowest of all the finishes so far. Yeah, another disappointment for Stuhet. Yeah, the line was good. Just that chest being a little bit upright, catching the wind. And then when she came out of the tux, the tux she had her hands really wide. Now Val Grenier, the Canadian, on her way. She has tasted success this season, won the Crunch Gagora giant slalom last weekend, which means that she has won two of the last three Crunch Gagora giant slaloms. And Val Grenier specializing in GS and Super G, doesn't double in downhill after a couple of uh, big crashes in 2019, has steered clear of downhill, but does ski super g and is oh, i was just about to say has skied well and then she suddenly headed off in a in a weird and wonderful direction and she is 0.27 up but that isn't going to stick around oh matt she is trying to hold on to that tuck position she didn't move out of it so i mean incredibly gutsy i'm not sure it's going to pay off though because there's been too many mistakes it's all about finding that balance i feel if she just come out of the tuck momentarily and here she, oh, it's, it's over. all over yeah, it was oh, a similar, it, similar line to the one we saw from Francisca Gritch, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, but way more extreme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Gutbarami still out in front. Connie Hooter second. Miriam Putner third. Switzerland, Austria, Austria. Plenty more to come. Marina Gazi meets with Daniela Poland. We'll be next to ski here in Zalcato. Yeah, so good action so far today. Lara Gutbarami poised to claim her 40th career World Cup win. And uh, Marta Bassino is headed over to congratulate Lara Gutbarami. Let's get a check on the standings. Her lead over Connie Hooter is a quarter of a second, then a further 100th to Miriam Puckner, who was on the podium yesterday, back in there again today. In fourth, Ragan Hill Movinkel. Then Michelle Gizin, followed by Laura Gaucher, Sophia Goggia, Roman Miradoli. Good result for Roman Miradoli. Her best since returning from injury. Brignoni is ninth, and Corinne Suter rounds out the top ten. A reminder of the top three. Miriam Puckner with a really thrilling run down this Super G course. Connie Hooter in second after victory on Friday. Back in amongst the podium places today, but it's the great Lara Gutmarami who uh, literally ripped out of the start hut and left everything on the mountain to lead the way here in Salkensee this morning. We have uh, an extended start list of 58 racing today. There are still plenty of decent races to come, but it's going to take something really tasty to steal the lead from Lara Gutbarami now. Seconds. 30 seconds until the restart. Next to ski will be Marina Gazinica, Danielle of Poland. <laughs> Marina Gazinica, Danielle on her way for Poland. that lovely drone shot and you just get that feeling for how it is to ski the top section of this course no wind now for Daniela at the top that's lovely through there on that right ski no problems at all just a little bit twisted as she came through there oh and again twisted and heavy on the edge and that's why you saw all that snow spraying up that's gonna have shooken her up just a little bit but those heavy edge checks and putting them sideways are so costly in Super G. A Super G, the discipline which is all about that smooth finesse uh, and carrying the speed and not putting in any checks like she did. Had a consistent giant slalom season so far, Marina Gazanitsa, Danielle. 
highlight of which was a seventh in a Cron Plus. That was last season, I beg your pardon. So far this season, just yet to really hit the stride that she found consistently throughout the 23 campaign. Got a teammate now, Magdalena Luchak, a regular competitor also for Poland, so she's no longer a, a one-woman team, which she was for so long. 18th position for Marina Gazilica Daniela Poli. One and a half seconds off the pace. Yeah, a little bit of frustration there. Came in quite direct at times. And look, you can see when the ski suddenly bites like that, that's that little bit too heavy on the, out, on the outside ski. And that was the problem for the Polish racer. Next to ski, Christina Arger from Austria comes from Seoul. Has been a top 10 athlete in Super G in the past. Yet to really find her best form this season. But the Austrians are shaping up well today. Second and third at the moment. And Arger is faster than anybody at the first intermediate time and it's a decent lead as well or at least it was until she jammed the brakes on what a shame she twisted her upper body and lost all that speed she generated at the top yeah a combination of incredibly fast ski skis big skills and no wind that was amazing top section and she really will be kicking herself now because that's a few times she's put them sideways i wonder if she's just coming into certain sections of this course with a lot more speed than she expected she looks a little bit hesitant now unfortunately that body language is telling us that those mistakes up top have pushed her off slightly she's very upright and not attacking the course now ah yeah it's all gone wrong 1.41 started off so well the Austrians in second and third good weekend three really good days of racing victory for Huta two podium places yesterday two more today but only a, a 20th position for Christina Arga 1.69 seconds off the pace this is where it all unraveled after such a, a brilliant top section yeah and she got slightly twisted with that right arm and then that ski just suddenly gave way behind her and brushed away the speed now emma eicher had a, a an entanglement with the safety netting yesterday it's really rather sums up her season it's been really good or really bad for emma eicher so far the good bits sixth in the san moritz downhill and tenth in the val d'azere super g the less good bits missing uh, straddling the first gate in a slalom and then the crash yesterday but unpredictability is her watchword and therefore she's always exciting to view when she's attacking these world cup courses let's see how she's performing here not a bad start for emma eicher of germany no she looks very very relaxed ever, ever so slightly upright but relaxed and the line is good just a little brush off the speed there on the left footer but it's still good it's still Pretty clean. I'd like to see her just a little bit more dynamic. Oh, oh she's living dangerously there. I had to prop herself up with her right hand at high oh. speed and she's lost a whole chunk of time as a result. Nearly a full second off the pace. Well, that big under gate, that double gate on the left footer saved her. If it had been a normal control gate, she wouldn't have made it. And Emma Eicher is 21st. Well, she's happy to be in the finish, but not quite the result she was looking for. Bit of a mixed bag, unfortunately. Good on the top, not so good on the bottom. Stephanie Genal next to go for Switzerland. With bib number 26, Genal driving out of the start, thrusts her fists forward, trying to get that most efficient shape. First intermediate, 13.06 for her teammate Lara Gutbarami. She's 15 hundredths off the pace. Well, remember, we're coming from the lowered start, so we don't get that big acceleration out of the start gate. So it's all about the gliding skills in the top. And of course, if you're lucky not to get the wind, which I do feel has died down. Uh, now on the top section, which is great for the next 30 or so racers still to come. 
Oh, and she's all over the place there through that right footer, getting twisted up, not being able to keep purchase, and the ski just brushing off speed right through that turn. Struggling again there, low and wide on that right foot. Chenal hard on the left ski, and this really inviting pack of high-speed gates on the relatively flat finish towards the line, but the damage done at the top, 1.45 seconds off the pace switzerland first and fifth at the moment with lara gutmer army top and michelle gizin next best amongst the swiss down in fifth position stephanie genard long way behind 20th behind ariana redler now towards the bottom of the pack but uh, getting better as the weeks across this short alpine skiing world cup season unfold I'm actually beginning to wonder whether the snow is just getting a little bit more polished with every skier that goes down and especially as they drift sideways, the edges just make it a little bit more polished. It looks a little bit more tricky in sections. Roberta Melazzi is away now for Italy. An aggressive start for Melazzi. The wind at the top seems to be shifting. Look at it going across the face of the mountain. At times it's been a tailwind, sometimes a headwind. Looks like it's uh, certainly helped Melazzi because she is faster than anybody else at that first intermediate time. Well, at 0.27, that's a massive whopping advantage on the top section. And she is really looking for speed through this section, staying in the tuck and making these turns look relatively easy. Goodness me, this is an awesome run so far from the Italian. That's the first mistake, but she's held on to it didn't seem to lose too much velocity the speed was maintained the next intermediate will give us a an accurate idea as to whether Roberta Malese is on for something a bit tasty here or whether it was a fluke at the top 58 36 for Gooper Army only 0.37 behind there's a chance of a first ever top 10 result for Roberta Malese of Italy she tucks in for the last couple of turns, takes the final roller and will cross the line in good shape, six. Personal best, never better than that for Roberta Malese. And no wonder she's celebrating. Sixth position with bib number 27. She's the best of the Italians today. What a cracker that was. And this is such a save. She's miles off the line, furthest out from everyone. Back with the Swiss team, Priska Nufa is away. She's had um, some decent form this weekend. Tenth in yesterday's downhill. Let's see how she deals with the super cube. We just saw the wind helping Roberta Malaysia at the top. The same has happened for Nufa. Just giving her a little push through the first half dozen turns. I'm not really quite sure which direction the wind seems to be coming from. It seems to be all over their place up there. One minute's from the side, then it's a little bit in front, and then it's from behind. A couple of scrappy turns there from Nufa. Had to put them sideways a couple of times. Not quite as clean as uh, we've seen from a few of the others. That's better through there. Strong on the left ski. Doesn't look like she's quite got the same speed, though. Remember, Sorry, every... Babe. Only Bib in the 20s has been productive for some. We saw uh, Miriam Putler with Bib number 20 go third. We've just seen Roberta Malese with number 27 go sixth, which uh, tells you that there's still some action left to enjoy in this Sunday Super G in Salkinze. But I think for Prishka Nufa, the chance of uh, any sort of celebrations have long gone. 114.95 for her teammate Lara Gutbarami. Nufa 17th. 1.31 off the pace. Yeah, it's not just the mistake in that current moment. It's actually how it translates to your speed and then it's almost impossible to get that speed back. Um, so it's really about keeping it clean and error free. We know that in ski racing and that is the difficult part, isn't it? Now, a former Olympic Super G champion, Esther Ledetska. She won the gold in... Pyeongchang, South Korea, where Emma is heading for the Youth Olympics next week. Not to compete, I need to uh, <laughs> emphasise, but as a coach. And Esther Odetska was that winner in 20, 
18 with bib number 26. It's a similar starting position today for Ledecka 29. And she has really got nothing to show for her uh, season so far. Although she has been in the top 10 in Super G here in Zalkanze in the past. Well, I like what I'm seeing so far. She's getting the line right. It looks aggressive. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I might not be going to compete, Matt, but I can still talk about it. Yeah, this is excellent <laughs> skiing here. I am really enjoying this run from Ledetska. And this is still good. Look how clean she is from her left to right ski. Nothing wrong with this. She's got a lot of speed now. She needs to be strong on the left ski, but hold on to the line. It's so important. These next five or six gates, it's good still. The multi-talented skiing snowboarder, snowboarding skier, Esther Ledetska, giving herself a chance of a best result on her skis in this uh, 2024 season. A top 10 awaits for Esther Ledetska, 114.95. She won't beat that. It's 10th for the Czech skier. Good stuff from Esther Ledetska. She's been uh, getting some disappointing results but that changes today with her first top 10 of the season <laughs> Michaela Haider for Austria starting with bib number 30 Haider off and away at the top follow her on the drone for the first few turns See the shadow of the drone just uh, behind Michaela Haider. 0.27 off the pace at the first intermediate. I don't think she got the wind right at the top, unfortunately. Just trailing by 0.27. Again, what a fantastic this shot this is. That's clean, that's smooth. Not quite got the speed though, as Ledetska did coming through there. Haider with a good line, no, ma no major problems. Oh, she's very tight on that gate. 0.48 off the pace for Michaela Haider. It's impressive looking skiing. She clearly has the feel for the Super G skis and the high speed turns. 0.48 off the pace on an ordinary day. You'd think that would give her a chance of a, of a top five finish, but they're so tightly bunched. Only a third of a second between the top five in the uh, finish here today as Michaela Haider leans through the last few turns looking for some straight line speed to improve her finishing position here Michaela Heider into 19th spot for Austria 1.32 seconds off the pace lots of support for all the Austrian athletes on the course today still a few to come as well well they are so bunched aren't they it's so tight split literally by hundreds so we've had the first 30 down the course so we get the obligatory shot of the current top three with Lara Gutmarami keeping her seat as the leader of this Salkinze Super G by a quarter of a second to Connie Hooter who was Friday's winner then Miriam Puckner on the podium for a second successive day that's the top three and they are separated by only 0.26 of a second Stunning pictures. And here we have Miriam Puchner on your screen right now, currently in third. Really enjoying her speed skiing at the moment. Cornelia Hooter getting twisted up over that roller, but somehow managing not to lose speed in second. And Lara Gutbarami in front by 0.25. What a run she's had. Next uh, 10 on the start list, Yasmina Suta will be getting underway in about 40 seconds from now. Beautiful scenes, lots of snow about. Good start to the ski season, but I mean, it's been a, a month and a bit since it began. And uh, shaping up for an excellent end of January and a snowy cold period of the next couple of weeks has been a suitor will be next to ski in Salkinsa
Yasmina Suter pushes out of the start. You can see the control gates just wobbling in the wind, which is less gusty than it was certainly for the first racer. In fact, I think Stephanie Veneer, who was the first skier on the track, had the very worst of the wind. We've had moments when it's helped with a little bit of a, a, a tailwind. Some have had a headwind. The moment it seems to be relatively calm and a green light for Yasmina Suter at that first intermediate. Well, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Suter with an excellent line on the top section. Very, very close, just 11 hundreds back. Good over there as well on that right footer. Hardly came out of the tuck. Back into the tuck, really searching for that position whenever possible. And another good strong turn on the right ski. Really nothing wrong with this so far. Only 11 hundreds off the pace. No relation to Corinne Suter, the Olympic downhill champion. By the way, it's a pretty common name in Switzerland. Yasmina is handling herself well, but now the deficit begins to grow. 0.64 behind teammate Lara Gutbarami, who, Barami, whose lead looks pretty secure at the moment. Last little jump for Yasmina Suter. Can she get a top 15? Yes, she can. 15th position, 0.76. Respectable performance from Yasmina Suter of Switzerland. Oh, 0.76 back in your 15th. So really, really close. Such a close race. Deli Adjura will be starting next with bid number 32. Find her a little further down. We'll see them recorded out of the start and then find them at about the 32nd mark because of the shortened starting intervals. What a start for Delia Dura. She's made everybody sit up and take notice at the foot of the course point. 3-5 in front. Well, she took a similar line to Ledetska, really cutting in high out of that section. Let's see how it pays off into this next split, because that is some incredible top skiing. Oh, gosh, what a shame. Had to put them sideways, but come out well. She's still on line now. Now, it's, this is going to be very close. No, it's all gone. What a shame, those few mistakes. That heavy edge check got twisted up on that left foot on that really important gate just as she came out to the final section. Lara Gutmarami leads for Switzerland. Her win looks more and more guaranteed now as Delia Dura skis into 18th position. Connie Peter holds second for Austria. Miriam Puckner third for Austria. Then Mo Winkel gives in his fifth. Yeah, that's where it all went wrong. Really got twisted up. That left arm came round. Back of the ski went out. It's pretty uh, hard, that, that turn. It's got a big fall away on it, and that mistake is just not going to work out. Michelle Niedemiesen of Austria next to ski. Getting after it at the top. we we'll find her again at the 40-second mark. Only half a second off the pace now for Niedemiesen. She took that beautifully. Very clean on the edge change. And good through there. Oh, and a little stumble. Really, it's, it's awkward there. It's difficult to get the line right, but then saved by that big, long undergate. But unfortunately, she too, with a lot of damage done in that section. Isabella Wright will be next for the USA. Had a good performance yesterday. Christine Shire will start at 37 for Austria. She's had one World Cup win in her career, and that was on this course back in 2017. Ricarda Haas is in good shape as well. She'll go with number 39. And Nicole Delado, Delago, who uh, was in amongst the podium places yesterday, is yet to ski with bib number 41. So still a way to go before Lara Gutbarami's win is assured here let's see isabella right now bib number 34 out of the start and on her way so we just saw her push that the start and hopefully we're going to yeah pick her up as she comes over there nice green clean, lights but a little bit right. to the right point five six up at that second intermediate isabella right is steaming here in zalkin say really getting after this Oh, she's bent around on the left foot. Now, next intermediate, 0.89. Yeah, it's not uh, going to happen for her today. Jacqueline Wiles had a good result for the Americans yesterday. She'll start with 47 today. Isabella Wright, after a really good top section, 
crosses the line some way back, 29th in the end, 1.73 seconds down. really get a feeling of just how quick it is the part this part of the course when she comes through on that left footer oh she's disappointed ski racing it's brutal Catherine Hittelstein Gassinger of Germany will be next to ski with bid number 35 0.76 off the pace for Hittelstein Gassinger and for the Gassinger. Germans today. Just a little bit timid, I would have said, through that section and really getting pushed off the ideal line here. Nowhere near it, to be honest. And hence, you see her over two seconds back. Yeah, a long way down. Germans 30th and 31st. At Emma Eicher and Kira Weidler. Hugely disappointing day for them. And Hittelstein Gassinger, I think, might just be the last of the lot today. Yeah, 33rd with just the, the DNFs behind her and the DNFs only number two, Yasmin Fleury and, and Valerie Grenier. Opened up momentarily out of, off that jump. But it is a lovely shot when she gets back into the tuck. Karen Clement next to ski for France. Good day for the French today. They will take a, a lot of encouragement for the performances today of Romain Mirodoli and Laura Gaucher. Karen Clemon, decent top section, just 0.34 back on the second split. And still going well. Now, if she can keep the line through this section, she could be a threat to the top 15. Oh, it's gone a little bit further into the red now. Still, some excellent sections. 1.27 off the pace. Karen Clement, relatively inexperienced. First time she's raced here this weekend and 30th position. So the way things stand, she will pick up one World Cup point. But there's a long way to go before that is guaranteed. Lots of Austrians here enjoying the atmosphere and they've been rewarded this weekend with a win and a a handful of podium places. They've got another athlete on the course now who's had a victory, one victory in her career, Christine Shire. And that was here in Talcante in a downhill round four of the 2017 World Cup campaign. Let's see if Christine Shire could do it again. Well, two green lights to get things going. Well, she is lighting up the top section of this course and now coming into the middle section and still it's clean, it's fast. You can really see the speed she is carrying and she's soft and light so she, when she does get bounced around she doesn't lose too much time. Oh, that's the first big mistake and getting twisted up there. Will have definitely lost just a little bit more time through that section. 0.36, not much though. Christine Shire is risking everything. The crowds are getting excited can christine shire score a top 10 that would be comfortably her best result for about three seasons 17th in the end just got away from her look at the time difference though 0.82 between first and 17th it's so tight today yeah and without that mistake on the left foot she would have been another what three four tens further up the field which would have put her into the top 10. she's happy with it though a quote from Lara Gutbarami if uh, this lead stands it will be 40 wins on the World Cup 20 in Super G she says I wasn't so fast at the top a little bit rounded with my turns but then I risked it all and I went for it and uh, well 13 years after my first win here it's amazing to be back on top something quite different podiums are always uh, something that I Crave, but of course the win is is what I really come for. This is Lena Vechner. 1.01 seconds off the pace. Lara has just actually said she wants to ski. This is interesting because uh, she's been skiing on the World Cup since she was 16. She says, I want to ski for two more years. 
two more seasons for Lara Gutmarani and then she wants to start a family. So that's interesting. We've got two more years to enjoy her unique ski racing ability. And what a career she's had. Incredible. Yeah, it's been World Cup win number 40. I mean, just sort of take Michaela Schifrin out of the equation, don't you? And 40 is an extraordinary number of World Cup successes, bearing in mind that most athletes just crave one. Ricarda Haase of Austria will be next to go, still looking for her first. She had a medal at all, oh, no, Haase's out. And we didn't see that crash happen, but she's conscious and the wave sends the signal that she's fine, she's twisted. She's gonna, oh, she needs to get, that's it, she's okay now. That's Ricarda an easier Haase maneuver. Easier yeah. maneuver with a slalom ski, that one, Matt. <laughs> yeah. It was a touring ski manoeuvre, wasn't it, really? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Oh, gosh, she's flexible, so that's good. Just kind of caught an edge. It's the twisting that you don't want. Oh, she hit the barrier hard, though. I'm not sure if she's taking out the timing as well. Is that the, the split timing there, Matt? Yeah, the Longines uh, padding around the, protected by that red uh, padded cover, that might be out of contention now, out of commission, so there might be a delay while the timing is repaired. Yeah, Ricardo Haas are now safely across the line. The race is interrupted while the safety netting that she damaged and the timing system that she uh, skied into is fixed back into position. Yeah, they're busy now. interruption to the race but they've been treated to three excellent days of speed racing hats and gloves very much required it's a bitterly cold January in the Alps snow conditions excellent and after the awkward start to the season when well certainly on the men's side everything seemed to get cancelled and uh, the women lost some races as well we seem to be into a period of good weather cold weather with plenty of snow let's hope that the uh, season can crack on. Camille Ceruti of France will be next to go and uh, Nicole De Lago. Nadia the De Lago system will follow with 51 and we have 58 scheduled to race this morning. And the second run of the men's slalom in Wengen still to come as well plus all of our excellent winter sports coverage in cross country, ski jumping, Nordic combined, snowboarding, freestyle and biathlon. A new upright post required to fix the damage done by uh, Ricardo Haase. Cold in the finish area now. Somebody's wearing the Union flag there, but there's no British interest today. <laughs> Dave Riding in action. Where's Where's Dave at the moment? Emma, did you see an update from his first run and Billy and Laurie? Um, he was in eighth when I last checked, but I will have a quick look, Matt. And update you. Race interrupted here after Ricardo Haase skied into the safety net. He took out the safety net and the uh, timing system as well, which is being rather agriculturally replaced. And Camille Ceruti has been asked to wait in her race gear. She's getting a little chilly at the top. She will start next with bib number 40. Oh, Matt. Some excellent news on the British slalom front. We've got yeah, the team in 10th and Billy in 16th. Excellent. And so two of yes. the three British guys yep. in the second run. That will yep. be, uh, uh, is that a best ever first run from Billy? I think it might be I up there. I think it might be actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's excellent. But Billy's been really strong in training. He's actually 
sometimes been ahead of um, Dave in training, so it's not a surprise. So, uh, an interruption here of about six or seven minutes after Ricardo Hassel went into the safety netting. We are now almost ready to resume. Next to ski will be Camille Ceruti from France. Good day for the French athletes. Romain Miradoli had a, a breakthrough result with her comeback skiing into ninth position from bib 16. Laura Gaucher, who started number two, has held on to seventh position. And Camille Ceruti has now been told that she has about 40 seconds to wait. Away goes Camille Ceruti from France, out of the start after a 10 minute delay following the crash of Ricardo Hassa, who's absolutely fine. Camille Ceruti, nice conditions for her. The wind has gone away, it's uh, relatively calm at the top of the track and she's making hay while the sun shines here, the French athlete. Good result for Miradoli and Gaucher, ninth and seventh today. I'm really enjoy enjoying the top section of this course, really enjoying, I should emphasise, with that green light, that's incredible. That was a little bit dodgy over the roller, just twisted again a little bit, but back onto it now. And what a run so far from the French skier, Chiruti, just on fire right now comes up to the left footer can she keep it clean yeah it's pretty good lost a little bit more it's going to be a little bit into the red now i would say but only just 0.5 this is excellent skiing chance of a first ever top 10 result for camille saruti here she has nailed the top section looking a little weary through the final few turns how close could she go the winning time today 114.95 saruti 21st in the end so world cup points but uh, no top 10. Well, that concludes our coverage on Eurosport TV. If you want to carry on watching the Zalkaze Super G, you can do so on Discovery Plus, but on Eurosport TV, we are heading for some more winter sports action. Stay tuned on Discovery Plus. We will see this Super G through right to its conclusion with bib number 58. But it looks at the moment as if it is World Cup victory number 40-4-0 for the great Lara Gutmarami, joined on the podium by two Austrians, Connie Hutter and Miriam Puckner, with Mo Winkle fourth and Michelle Gizzard in fifth. Nicole De Lago is away for Italy. Equal third in yesterday's downhill. Nicole, the older of the two sisters. Let's see well, not a surprise. Can... Not a surprise seeing her ahead on the top two splits, Matt, with the gliding section. We know she's a, a top glider, top downhill skier, but I'm not so sure that these turns are going to suit her as much. She once had a podium in Super G from bib number 31, but that was back in late 2019 in Lake Louise, and we're not going to see a repeat of that today. The damage is already too significant for Nicole Delago. She'll finish, but the highlight for her will remain yesterday's podium place in the Zalkenzee downhill. Kiwi Cashman next to go for the USA with number 42. 42 of 58 starters this morning. And we pick her up about a third down. Cashman battering into those gates. That's uh, not so advisable in Super G because if you catch the arm at these speeds, it can be really unpleasant. And she's a little bit low on the line there, just having to make a quick edge check. 
edge change, sorry, and getting thrown over the little roller halfway through the undergate. Managed not to lose too much speed, though. One top ten result in her career. That was in a Super G in Valdez there a couple of seasons ago. Rikini Cashman is 34th out of the points today. Well, the conditions are still excellent. It's hardly changed, to be honest. She comes. She came across the the slight rut that there's there. Didn't get the line right there. But if you look carefully, it's hardly a track in the snow. Just where they've had to drift the skis, you start to get a tiny bit of a judder forming. Broken gate. That upright will need to be replaced. So another interruption. We've had lots of those this weekend across the three days of racing. But uh, thankfully, unlike for the men, the serious injuries have been scarce this weekend. Of course, the men dealt a double blow with the uh, end of the season for Alexi Pantero shortly after he a father for the first time and uh, then yesterday that incredible no, that. crash stuff no. <laughs> in the finishes for Alex Kilder in the Vengen full length downhill the news from Alex this morning he posted on social media with a picture alongside his partner McKenna Schifrin and we hear the official diagnosis is uh, a dislocated shoulder which I assume has been relocated now I've done that that hurts and a rather bad cut in his leg, but there's been no announcement that it's a season-ending injury for Alex Kilder, so hopefully, after some R&R, &R, we'll see him back in action later this season. And I'm surprised to hear about these, these, this cut, Matt, because um, all the athletes are wearing anti-cut trousers or should be wearing these anti-cut trousers that they wear underneath their cat suits. Just um, if you do fall, the ski edges are so sharp, you don't want them coming anywhere near your, your body. And if they do happen to touch or hit your body, if you're wearing these trousers, theoretically, they should save you from getting a horrible cut. And they're made, what, they're made of some sort of titanium protective material, are they, think, or something? I think it's some kind of Kevlar mat. I, I, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. We use... Um, um, uh, VIX protection which are fantastic um, but um, there's various different ones I think Energy Apura do one as well so that upright has been replaced the Talcon Zay Super G gate is back in position and we can head to number 43 which will be Alice Merriweather back on the World Cup tour after a long layoff and starting to uh, find some good form she's been given the the one minute timer until her race can begin this morning here in Zalkante thirty seconds to go until Aris Alice Merriweather can begin her run down this super G course still to come Jacqueline Wiles top 20 yesterday We'll start with number 47. Before we see Wiles, we'll see the penultimate American. No, there's actually Trisha Mangan, Lauren McCougar, and Jacqueline Wiles still to come. So still lots of uh, athletes from the American team to follow. Michaela Schiffen absent this weekend. We understood from the uh, post that Alex Kilder put up that she flown to Switzerland to be with him in hospital after yesterday's horrific crash. So away goes Alice Merriweather of the United States of America with an early green light. We've seen a lot of early green lights, haven't we? I wonder if that's a little bit the wind playing uh, to do with that at the top. That's a very high line she took out of there. Oh, quick edge change and high above the blue. It's a different line that we've, than we've seen from many of the others. Oh, she's twisted up here. Really going for it, really giving it everything, but making some pretty major mistakes. That's the gate that's just been repaired. And now, how does she do on this tricky section through the left footer? A little bit scrappy, but carrying speed. 
pretty smooth Super G skiing from Alice Merriweather, but a second and a half behind. And with the top 20 now separated by 1.19, she will struggle. She might not even make points here today. Let's see how close she can go. Merriweather into 38. 2.03 seconds down. Good start, but uh, a slightly disappointing finish for Alex Merriweather. Yeah, just put them sideways a few too many times. Misjudged the line a little. Sabrina Meyer is next to go for Austria with number 44. Point zero three in front at that first intermediate. Sabrina Meyer with a very famous Austrian ski racing name. And very clean turns through this little section. The line is spot on. The turns are high. Sorry, turns are clean. That one was interesting though. She really kind of came in with a lot of angle and clipped the gate, but then skied almost too far up the hill. 58.36 for Lara Gubarami at the next split time. Sabrina Meyer, 0.68 and had to adjust an emergency manoeuvre to keep herself on course and she was just too late to continue safely and it's a DNF for Sabrina Meyer today. Herbert Mandel, head coach of the Austrian team watching on. He'll be pretty happy I think with the rewards they picked up from there. Three days of racing here, a win and a handful of podiums this weekend for the Austrian women's team. Disappointment for Maya there. She was going.